the meeting to order uh because we haven't done that um so i'm calling to uh to order the november 13 meeting of the montpelier planning commission uh we have to uh approve the agenda and get a motion to approve the agenda from one of the planning commissioners Any, um, I need somebody from the Planning Commission to move to approve the agenda. I so moved, Kirby. Thank I'll you, second. Gabe. I'll second. A sec we have a second Sorry. from Brian. Those in favor of Gabe's motion, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? What's that, Mike? Nope, I didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. So. Meeting is in order. Uh, Mike had just, Mike, before the meeting started, Mike told us about the new Zoom procedures and I think we all know what to be prepared for there, um, which means moving on to comments from the chair. Um, I have one update about getting together with the housing committee. This thing has involved a lot more back and forth than anticipated, um, but we're we're gonna sort something out. It's just that the housing committee wants to be able to talk to us about whatever they wanna talk about and they don't wanna worry about open meeting laws being violated. So we're gonna sort that out with them and figure out a way to meet. I am currently kind of opposed to holding like a whole different special meeting that's, you know, on the record and everything. So we're just going to figure, because we, our ideas for this was something more informal. Um, and I, and I value everybody's time and don't want to hold a special meeting that doesn't have a whole lot of substantial purpose to it. Um, so we're going to work something out with them. Um, and I'll keep you updated. Probably at this point, it's going to happen, you know, in a month or two, something like that. Uh, the other thing is that we are not going to meet next time. So the next time we do meet will be the second Monday of December. Um, and that's it for updates. Does anyone else have anything else to share? Hey, uh, Kirby, I was wondering if you saw the, um, there's a Times Argus piece about like housing regulations being changed in Barrie. And I was wondering if you or Mike knew anything about that. It's very similar to what we're talking about here. I, I haven't read it. Have okay. you, Mike? Yeah, I, I saw the article, but I don't have the specifics. I don't have a copy of any draft from, from Barrie City. I, I saw it yesterday, today, um, okay. but didn't have a chance to dig in and see what they were what they were doing okay i was just wondering if there's like any communication between it sounded I mean, like from the from the newspaper that there were some things that were similar in that um is similar in conversations to what we're doing it sounded like they were trying to remove density from a few things um, I don't know if they were trying to remove density throughout the city, but um, parking requirements, they were going to be adjusting. I think a number of what the of the things they're doing <clears throat> kind of goes back to what we did in 2018. So they hired the same consultant we had when we did our adoption that was adopted in 2018. So I think they're pretty much making that big step to the next level of um, – of zoning to kind of match what <clears throat> what ours looks like a little bit more so but again i don't have the specifics of the changes they were making okay thanks mike and uh, one one little little factual tidbit that's related maria um and for anybody else uh who's not aware uh, like part of the vermont system with planning is that we have regional planning commissions and um you know, uh, I believe it's Ariane is our official liaison, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard. Okay. We did some, cause I think like, I think Gabe helped out at one point. Um, but anyway, uh, with the regional planning commission, you know, 
uh, when towns may there's so there's a regional plan because of these regional planning commissions that are kind of filling the void for like the lack of county government. Um, there's a regional plan. And so when you make major changes uh, on the like municipal level, you do have to check in with the regional planning commission, um, which so Barry will be doing that. And then part of that checking in with the regional planning commission is to check with your neighbors. So eventually, like if Barry's doing a big rewrite, there's a chance that somewhere down the road that they would check in with us um, in order to follow all of the, the laws around conforming with the regional plan and all that. Um, so, so that's, that's how it tends to work. We like in the past, we've had like the town of Berlin check in with us about some things they were planning, for instance, because they're neighbors. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anybody else have anything? We'll move on to general business and don't see anyone present who's not on the planning commission. No, no neo-Nazi so far. That's good. Um, so moving on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is to discuss zoning and river hazard area regulations hearing on December 11th. Um, this is Mike passing some info um, on to us about the December 11 hearing. So hand it off to you, Mike. Yeah, so we just wanted to go real quick to, um, so if you're looking for copies because they're big, there's going to be a shortcut on the front page of the city's website. If you go to the city's website, usually, and I'll go there afterwards, um, this is, we're going to make a link to this page, which is the zoning and subdivision and floodplain regulations. And right on the top is a draft. So if you want to get a copy for yourself, they're big downloads. That's why we haven't really been able to send them out too much. So there's zoning changes. Uh, there is actually a set of river hazard changes, but the those are really small. The only thing those are looking at are what are called critical facilities, um, which is just changing the regulations for critical facilities. So uh, hospitals, police stations, fire stations, city hall. Um, if you're going to be in the floodplain they're required to be a, two feet above the 500-year floodplain instead of two feet above the 100-year floodplain. And that's just because of the special circumstances of those, uh, those facilities. Because you really can't, really shouldn't want to have them out of commissions. Um, and in some cases, it also includes things like hospitals. So you wouldn't want to have, um, say, a nursing facility get built in the downtown even if it's two feet above the hundred year floodplain, that doesn't mean it won't flood. And if it does flood, then you've got a lot of people who have special needs that um, need to get evacuated. And that's, that's a much more difficult position, which is why they require even higher standards. So that's, it's a recommended standard at, the, at NFIP. We're, we're doing it um, a little bit part of our CRS requirements. Um, we don't think it'll have a big impact, but just because we haven't talked about it, that's what it is. But the draft zoning we have talked about, the draft zoning map is here, so we now have the draft zoning map and uh, and the list of zoning changes. That was the table that we went through. And the draft zoning regulations, which I'll show you really quick, is the strikeout version. So it's kind of a big strikeout version. Um, so it's 231 pages. So if anyone wants a copy, I can probably send people copies, but it's a... It's a longer strikeout copy. That's that's what's online. Um, but there'll be a shortcut. So if you're looking for a copy, that's where they are. Um, and so how the hearings will be held. So a number of you have already been through this a couple of times. Um, nothing really changed other than what we just talked about at the start of the meeting. Um, it'll be a little bit different, but for people who haven't gone through this before, you know, Kirby and I just wanted to make sure you kind of had a, a little bit of a idea of how these are run. We really are taking this a lot like our listening session, 
Um, we're here to listen to people, take input. Um, if you have questions, you can ask questions, but generally we don't go through and debate people on point for point. It's of course your meeting. You can, you know, uh, take it up with everyone, but usually the way this works is they tend to be, be a little bit more listening sessions, asking questions. If, if somebody has, you know, a point they're trying to make and it's not clear to you, you can ask questions, but generally we are listening to what they say. At the end of the meeting, we'll go through and discuss what we heard and decide what changes to make um, based on that input. And I think we had talked about this before that we're hoping it may make the meeting a little bit longer on December 11th, um, but because the meeting after that is Christmas, we're gonna have one meeting in November, one meeting in December. Um, I really wanna get this to city council in January. So if we could stay a little bit later if we need to, to go through and make uh, an approval that night to send it to city council, that would be better. If we get too much and it's just, we're in a position where we're not comfortable to move this to city council, uh, I'm not gonna ask you to, to force you to move it forward. You just make a decision that we'll talk about it more in January and we'll take that time. Um, but if you kind of hear from a bunch of folks and you're like, yeah, I, yeah, we'll make this change, but we won't make those changes and let's move this forward. Um, then that would be a big help to keeping it on time because what we don't want to do is have the zone, have the zoning hearings, um, go past town meeting day, because then we might end up with new counselors and they may rewarn new hearings. Um, so if we can get all the hearings in and have council adopt it before the end of February, then that's good for getting the zoning amendment passed. Uh, are there any questions on that? The process or the rules? Um, Mike, one of us, since, since Carlton's new and he's not here right now, um, one of us should probably give him some kind of heads up. Um, I can, I can try to reach out to him if you want. Yeah. If um, you have an opportunity to, um, yeah, cause part, a little bit of this was to help him out too. And he's not here, but. Yeah, I can, I can try to, to get in touch with him. And, Cause I, uh, yeah, yeah, we, I had the orientation walk and talk with them recently. Um, Good. We can follow up. Uh, okay, is there, everyone's ready for the hearing. Um, I'm going to circle back real quick. And um, I, I had Googled um, the, the thing that Maria mentioned earlier just to check in. And it looks like I didn't, I wasn't aware, but it looks like the housing committee spoke to the um, city council recently, um, Rebecca Copans. Mm -hmm. um, was there, are there any updates there that uh, line up with, with our stuff or any, anything there? I wasn't at the meeting. My understanding was that was really focused on the housing committee has proposed a new ordinance regulating short-term rentals. And that was kind of the focus of their presentation was um, to try to have the council advance a short-term rental ordinance, very similar to Burlington's um, just as a general box of uh, how Burlington handles it. So that's what they're looking at. Okay. I don't, I don't think we went there with the city plan, did we? No, yeah. I don't think so. It hasn't, and at least over the past couple of years when we were talking with the housing committee before, the perception was that it wasn't a big issue. And even the housing committee said a, that a little bit to that effect. It kind of says not, it's not a big issue now, but we want to be ready in case it does become a big issue. So it's... You know, it's one of those. Yeah. It seems like the best thing we can do is actually have a hotel in this town. <laughs> um, I'd take a couple of them. Yeah. But, like, seriously, I, I mean, that's one reason probably why Airbnb, Airbnbs do have a market because you don't have another choice. Um, okay. Okay. Thanks for that update, Mike. 
And yeah, it sounds like we should get in touch with housing committee and talk. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move on on the agenda. Uh, and uh, all we have left uh, tonight is to look at the storyboards for energy and economic development. Um, I went over those today. Um, I don't know if anyone else got a chance. Um, but I can. I, I unlocked the share screen, so you should be able to grab it now. Okay. Everybody see the energy chapter? Okay. Um, this one I actually didn't do a lot with, um, but um, I just had some comments. Um, I was, um, I don't know if you know this, Mike, but you know, some, some of these storyboards have yellow text. And I was just wondering if they're yellow because there's some kind of vision for are these are these meant to be like pulled to the side or or highlighted in some way, Do you know. I sure. don't know why these were those were put in by SE group, and I'm not sure if that's because they're going to be special tags or not. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so yeah, I was just at I'm just curious to like pass along to them if they have some vision for it. I think I think having some dynamic things on the page is, is nice if that's if that's what they're planning to do with that. Um and that's what I'm assuming. And that's um because it looks like it's a bit different in the way it's written compared with the um, you know, text other places. Uh I was yeah, so thinking we mostly don't say city council, so I was just thinking that we could oops. I don't want to. True. Yep. Uh, just be, you know, the the thing there is just we typically we tend to say city, and then even though obviously a lot of the activity that's done by the city is done by the city council, just keeping that consistent. Uh. And then I compared the storyboards with what we had prepared before. And I saw that most stuff was taken for this chapter. Most of it was taken as it was in the other place. Um, the next thing I had on here was that there was a comment about what kind of infographic they should use. And I'm assuming guest user is someone from SE Group. And so I was just planning to pass along some feedback to them that uh, if there's going to be an infographic on an energy related topic out of all of these here, I would say that it's probably best to lean towards renewable energy, which some of these do uh, touch on, like the solar array one. Um, so I don't know, I would just pass that. So I left a comment just that. Uh, I think renewable energy would be what people are most interested in when they engage with the energy stuff. And it, it seems to be the biggest concern. Um, everybody else feel that way. Yeah. Um, and then there was, there was just a spot here where like we had a for example and it seemed like it flowed with the rest of this. So I would just uh, suggest that they move that back up and make, these first two paragraphs, one paragraph, but I didn't think this sentence in the middle was helpful and uh, and it wasn't part of our stuff from before. It's, it, se it seems to be some kind of introductory, like this section reviews shared issues, like like kind of like what the synergies do. I don't know, it didn't. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's, I think that's it for yeah, that's it for any inner, uh, any um, editing type comments I had on this one. Did anyone else see anything in the energy chapter um, that they'd like to bring up? I'm 
Yeah, most story. of this had been reviewed previously. When I mean, because so much of this was pulled from, we wrote a chapter for anyone who maybe wasn't here for that. We actually wrote chapters for all of these. And then at a certain point, we had to convert them to storyboards. And so they went through and wrote a bunch of storyboards and we really didn't like them or they really weren't getting a lot of good positive response. We kind of told them, why don't you just take from our chapters? So that's when we kind of went back and kind of compare them now. So most of the language you see are things that either Kirby or I or somebody has has written, not SE group. So it should sound a little more like what we usually write. Okay, I'm going to move on to economic development. Can everybody see it? Yep. I somehow lost your faces. Well, we're still able to see you. Okay. Maybe if uh, I, I just wanted to make sure I had some vis like you know visible feedback options here to see, um, make sure I can see people. Okay, economic development. Um, this one did look like it was rewritten in places because it it wasn't exactly the same as what we had gave. So, but I still it doesn't look like I did a ton. Um, so just some like wordsmithing stuff in the beginning to make it a little bit more succinct. Um, and same down here, we've got the yellow text again. So just curious if what, what exactly the idea there is. Um, this is comment. That's comment from... I had, yeah. Uh, for, okay. Oh, so your guest user, mystery solved. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, one thing that when, when we spoke with SC Group last time, I forgot to bring this up, but I thought of it later. Uh, we were really excited by the idea of having an infographic that showed Montpelier's, or not an infographic, but like a, a map, a, um, like a dynamic map that showed Montpelier's um, development over time. And I should have brought it up with them last time, but hopefully that idea is not dead. Hopefully that's something they can do because we were excited about that. If that could be something that's, you know, either on the main page or the historic preservation, maybe page. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up with you, Mike, to, uh, if you're, if you're in touch with them soon to let them know that we're still interested in that. Um, Okay. So we have we have this stuff. Um, that's the uh, thing I just mentioned there. My comment there about the map, um, and then just the city council removed there. And. That's it. The, uh, down here, I removed the word new from Caledonia Spirits just because that's something that will be outdated, you know, soon. It won't be yep. soon. Um, and that's, that's it for me. Did, did anyone else have uh, anything or anything to say about the economic development chapter? Um, Kirby, I just had a comment about the first, yeah, that first paragraph where your pointer is. Um, I mean, it seems like we don't really know the effects of remote work versus people being home and able to shop downtown because they're not going to work in Burlington or elsewhere. I mean, I don't think we really know what those trade-offs are, do we? 
that there isn't any data about that. Mike, do you know? And this whole paragraph feels is like, like it feels like it could have an effect <laughs> on our economy, you know? Like yeah, yeah, and that's that's a little really what. Yeah, it's one of the the two mysteries. One is what is the how is remote work going to affect us, and that can affect a lot of things. Um, the offices, you know, offices are now more vacant, um, so that's going to have an impact on that part of the commercial real estate market. Um, those could always be converted to residential units and that's, that's fine. Um, but there's obviously going to be an economic change that remote work will bring to that, that side of things. But all those workers are population swells in Montpelier during the day. Um, so we're a town of 8,000 people. We grow to about 14 or we did pre COVID. We would grow to about 14,000 during the day with all the workers. And so that's an extra 6,000 people who shop and spend money and go to restaurants and everything else before going home or leaving work and going to a restaurant before they go home. Um, so there's a big difference having people moving in. So we've lost those, let's say post COVID, we're now in an environment where people are doing more remote work. We've lost those people. Well, now we have more people staying at home in Montpelier. So we've gained some people, we've lost some people, we've gained some people. What's the net? What What's the net? Does it have a big difference? And I think we're just going to have to wait to find out how that all shakes out in the end. So I think it's more of a question. So remote work is one of the big ones. The other one is um, the online shopping. And that, that's that been going on for obviously six or seven years now. That's, that was going on before COVID. We were talking about what is going to be the impact of online shopping. Um, 15 or 20 years ago, it was what is the impact of big box retailers on our downtown retailers? Um, are all the businesses going to be vacant in the downtown because everybody's up shopping at Walmart in Berlin um, and Williston? Um, and that was a question. We just didn't know how much of an impact. We knew there was going to be an impact and um, clearly it had an impact, more of an impact on some businesses than others. Um, and this is going to be the same thing, the, the continued growth of Amazon and these other companies. How is that going to impact our downtown retailers? I don't know if it, I don't know if it will, it will impact some niches and it won't impact others as much, but those are the two big question marks, I think, that are out there when it comes to economic development in our downtown. Um, just trying and to see where. I think we also, the last time we reviewed this was before the flood. Um, I mean, the state and federal workers, have they returned to their offices at all? I don't are know. Kirby might know open? more about the state workers. I don't believe, I believe state workers have partially come back. I think when I've talked to a number of people at um, like ANR, they come into the office once or twice a week, but they're still predominantly working at home. It's like 20, 20%, maybe 25 at best. Is that 20 or 25% compared to before the flood or before COVID? Pre COVID. Um, yeah. So the only thing I'll just say generally is I think it's really poorly written. And the document that we worked on like a year ago that's in the folder is better. So I'm not quite sure. I know they were trying to like make it a little bit more succinct, but I remember Kirby did put a lot of work into sort of crafting some language. And I, I'm not sure what they did has, has made it any better. I mean, I understand they pulled it from what we wrote, but it's, I don't know. It's not really. Sorry. Okay. From work, from looking at this today, I saw that they they pulled pieces, um, which did impact the flow, um, and made it. And and I made some of those some of those changes. So they made a a storyboard template, and I noticed it really didn't match our 
economic development chapter very well. So I went back and pulled pieces of the economic development chapter in, but it was very long and their introductions were short. So I think if you look at our introductory chapter, we had four paragraphs. And so I cut it down to two paragraphs. And I think the four paragraphs are better, but it's just much longer in comparison. Um, and therefore, it really became a little bit more difficult. You know, it's tough to shorten it up. And our yeah, economic- I know. And I know we're going to have, we'll yeah. have community input and it'll end up being like really bullets. And so maybe I shouldn't get so worked up about it, but I just read it. I'm like, this, this is like, it's not even USA Today quality, like economic. It's just bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like, it's not, I mean, I know what we're trying to do, right? And what, it, what it'll end up being is something very different. So I shouldn't get so worked up about it. No, I mean, if, and certainly if people find better ways, I mean, uh, as you know, as Kirby pulled this up, you can see a lot of the pieces that had kind of been cut out. Um, a lot of what I was trying to do uh, was to capture some of the big pieces. Again, um, I think everybody, maybe everybody was here for when we did economic development, but really economic development broke into two pieces. One chunk was talking about the businesses and the other chunk kind of talked about the workers. Um, you know, what, what do businesses need to be successful for economic development? What do workers need to be successful workers to, to prosper? So in the worker side, we're talking about we need affordable housing, we need childcare, and we need good transportation because a lot of people commute. Uh, if you live in town, not everybody can afford cars. Uh, and if, every, if we wanna have a uh, an economy where everybody has an equal opportunity to participate, then we need to have a transportation system and businesses set up in a way that we can all participate. We can't exclude people because they either can't afford to drive or don't have the ability to drive. So we had the worker side of things and we have what do we do to make businesses more successful and that's that's a completely different side so we tried to have we have to have two conversations within this chapter one about the the businesses and one about the workers and then when you write everything that we wanted to which we did and it was great but it's like a page and a half <laughs> um yeah so this this paragraph that I've highlighted here is where the storyboard starts. So the material above it was not included. And then there's, <clears throat> I think like this one is included. Um, so a, a lot of it was, there was, you know, judgment calls made about what parts to put in, you know, in, um, I'm not sure. I mean, we can have, we should have this conversation though. Um, Gabe, I can stop sharing the original here and go back to the, um, chapter. So, Gay, let me ask you one question. Um, what What were your thoughts about energy and, and the state of it? You know, I I think I had not had as much input into the energy, so I didn't know. I it seemed fine to me, but I I don't think I had joined the board at that point. And so this one, this was like the first one that we had worked on together when I had joined the board. You know, whatever it is, two years ago, eighteen months ago. Um. And so I remember working through it and then I just looked at what we had written. And again, I, I get it, right? We do have to, it's a website, right? People aren't, it's not the, it's a web-based plan. And I'm not suggesting that we, you know, wordsmith it here or now. I just, right. my overall yeah, comments so, is that it just doesn't read very well, so. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. I, I just looked at this one today and it, and and I did, you know, I had this, I had the same feeling and in, in looking at it today, just the way it was. Um, so we, we have this other material to pull from. We could also just take the, um, info that's provided here and just, and 
rework it. And this is probably, I think, what we will end up doing. We can just rework, like, like, like this was the information that was pulled out as significant when Mike was working with SE Group. Um, we can just so so instead of just deciding, like, you know, instead of, instead of deciding that, we can take this info and just and we could rework it um, to make it kind of flow better for uh, for this. Is there you know, any I mean, obviously, way? those are what the things Mike brought up are the right things, right? Like, this is what we really need to be focused on, you know, the transportation, child care, like, the, you know, how do we create this environment? I think it is, you know, it, we are in a very, like, unknown situation, how the downtown is going to reinvent itself. I mean, uh, the, the state hasn't made strategic decisions, and they're maybe a year away from making strategic decisions about what their workforce in town will look like, right? I mean, they've got a bunch of buildings and they're sitting on them. They're not sure. And that, that impacts the downtown, right? I mean, we, you know, if you were here and, you know, saw what things were like in 2018 or something, and then you saw what they were like in 2021. And then, you know, now we just, we don't know. So I think acknowledging that there's some things that are in flux that we don't know, I think it's, that's okay. You know, I don't need know that we need to look into a crystal ball about it. We just can say, look, there's a lot of things that are uncertain as we talk about our future, but I think those are the key things. It's just how, how does it flow? And maybe it doesn't, again, once it's on a website, web page, it's not going to really look like this anyway. So maybe it's not worth spending a ton of energy on. What I was going to ask is, um, is anyone interested in this little project just to, to massage this storyboard um, in the next couple weeks? I mean, I can, well, I can make a, what you, what I can you, make a stab you, out. In the end, what's the sort of highlight? Like, what do you want the, to do? Just make it concise. Goal, I, th I think the goal would be to say all the same things, but then, but to make it to make it flow and and be more readable for people. Um, because yeah, it, this one suffered from being taken out of the context of the other material. Um, so that that would be the goal, Aaron. Would just be like, um, you know. Yeah, I can do it. I just professional don't, level. Yeah, yeah, I can I can take a stab at it. I just wanted to make sure I I'm not gonna have really the capacity to go back to the old graph that we did and sort of graph that stuff back in. Um, but I, I can work with what this is and try to make it smoother. Okay. Um, yeah, appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, you don't need to go. You don't need to. I mean, you could go back. It's it's there in the shared drive. Just if you wanted for context but yeah just taking this taking the same information and just yeah uh, i i'll take a look at it but yeah it's just once you start getting to cutting and pasting across two documents you just get bogged down really quick. so mm -hmm. um, yeah i can do that okay so we can just we'll just polish this one up more and, and aaron will do that sounds good is that good with you gabe all right good with gabe yeah, and it should just need the introduction and the planning context because the synergies, goals, and aspirations, and who's involved, those shouldn't need to be changed. They're all okay. Right, right. It's just up top. So aspiration and goals definitely don't change, as as you know, Aaron. That's set in stone. I'd say if you I mean if if you want to take a stab at the at, at the style of the other one, so the. As far as I'm concerned, they wouldn't be off limits. Um, okay. Sounds that sounds great. Thanks, everybody. Did we have any more comments about economic development or energy? Or about the vision for the website, infographics, things like that that we can pass on? I, well, Carby, my question is like, do we even talk about the flood and all of this? Because I mean, this was written obviously before the flood, and it seems like we're just assuming that everything's going to go back to the way it was as of like June twenty twenty three, you know, and it might not. Um, do we leave room for that? Do we acknowledge it? <laughs> I think all of us really wanted to go back to June 2023, 
but I don't know if that's what's actually going to happen, you know? Um, but then you also don't want it to be a document that, you know, in two years time doesn't make sense because maybe Montpelier is completely restored and, you know, the flood is like in the, the way past, but I don't know how much should we refer to it or even discuss it? Like, I think for sure that we'll bring it up in the land use plan in the chapter. You know, this is, you know, this is, this chapter language is not legal, right? Oh, um, yeah. It's just, you know, it's just the, um, if we, it, so given that, if we want to acknowledge the flood, we can do that. Um, we don't have aspirations and goals about that here, but we do have them in places in the plan, right, Mike? I mean, you know. Before the June flood, we were still planning for uh, these things. Um, is it natural resources chapter, Mike, that mostly deals with? Yeah, natural resources. I mean, it should probably, if it isn't referenced in synergies, we should have it. Um, you know, there would make sense for us to add something in there. And we could add something up top just to go through and say it's part of the unknown. We just don't know. I mean, it's impacted commercial property owners. It's impacted businesses. And, you know, that'll be a third, a third piece. I mean, it's, it's interesting and hard to, to figure out how to tell that, to tell the story of economic development. I mean, we've got those economic forces that we talked about. We've got, COVID, we've gotten the flood of which are, you know, um, events that have happened. And so it kind of makes things, you know, how do, how do we talk to people about, you know, these are all the things that have kind of shaken up that snow globe and we got to kind of see how things go now. You know, maybe, you know, as Maria says, maybe two years from now, we're all not even thinking about flooding until the next time it rains hard. Um, or maybe everybody is still on the front of everybody's mind because we have a second smaller flood next year and it becomes, you know, there are communities, you know, in Maryland, there's the one in Maryland there that had 2000 year floods in two years. Um, you know, we're, we're not exempt from being hit again in a very short, short span. And what would that do to us? Um, economically. So I think, I think we just have to look at, you know, tell that story somehow. You know, these are, these are the things that we're looking at. There's a lot, you know, I don't know if I would want to, you know, investing money in a downtown building. Now that's, that's a, you're, Investing in housing kind of seems like a pretty successful investment. You know, investing in commercial development in the floodplain in Montpelier, I don't know, that's 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 more of a challenging question for investors. This is kind of placeholder stuff. Um, okay, so I just threw, threw like a placeholder thing in there to acknowledge that here. You're right, Maria, and I, I guess I've, I've not always been responsive because this isn't the first time you've brought up like flood stuff and it's like, oh man, yeah. What to what extent do we want to go back and and integrate? Um, we know that it's covered in the plan and like places, right? We just just yeah. How much do we call it out? I think in land use, it's going to be the elephant in the room, and we're going to have we're definitely going to have to do that. Um, what I is, think what we're going to hear about it? Don't you think? I mean, I think people will bring it yeah. up in hearings. Um, uh huh. 
And then, I mean, I think the economic development part of it is just how much money all of our businesses, the small businesses and commercial landlords have had to take from, you know, like Montpelier Live has been getting out grants, like how much they've been supported in the past two or three months. Um, and that's, I mean, it definitely hits one of the aspirations and goals. Like I think the city and Popular Alive have helped keep some of these businesses afloat. So, I mean, they are doing that work. It's not like we're making this up. And it's also not like forward, it's not future looking like this is what has happened and what will probably continue to happen that we will have to, you know, come and help out the businesses every time something like this happens. If our downtown is going to be located where it currently is. I, this is a bigger conversation and, and something for the land use plan chapter that we're going to be developing soon. But um, I definitely have in my mind that we should at least point out the possibility of downtown growth going uphill in places. Um, and, you know, that's not something that's been talked about a ton in city planning um, in Montpelier before, but at the very least, I feel like our land use plan should have like room for that decision to be made down the road. You know what I mean? Um, Cause the city plan is really about guiding future decision-making. And, and so if we suggest that that's a possibility that it could, it could just enable the city to, do, to go that direction. Um, I think I've mentioned before about, you know, going up East state street up to the college green and allowing, making sure that we allow mixed use and commercial stuff up that way. And if the businesses choose to try to concentrate that way because of blood concerns that it's possible, but it's a bigger conversation. Yeah. I mean, I think businesses should be located downtown personally. I think that's probably the right place for them to be, but saying that it's also going to be part of the city's responsibility to literally bail them out. You know, if this is where land use decides is the best place for a city to be, then it will also be up to the city to support those businesses when they do get flooded. You know, and that's kind of like what we've seen the past couple of months. And I think I think it's just like a reality that this is what how Montpelier will probably be functioning from now on. Um, everyone has that has this memory of this flood in the background. And so, yeah, when, you know, a, someone's looking to start up a new business downtown, they will definitely, they'll definitely be thinking of, you know, what happens if all my inventory is flooded, you know, like this is, so I think the city is going to have to pay attention to flood risk from now on. Um, and we can't always, these aren't going to all be new buildings, like the buildings that are currently there will probably continue to be occupied by somebody. Anyway, I just think it's like an important thing to note in this chapter that supporting, you know, the economic development of Montpelier is also supporting um, flood risk and flood relief when floods do happen. So I, I chose just in this filler language I just threw down, I chose to focus on the mitigation and adaptation because I do think that we can't control like what people, what the market is going to be doing, but I, I can only assume that many, many landlords are going to be trying to flood proof, so to speak, the downtown buildings so that the dam so that the economic damage isn't so severe in the future. Um, but it's not something that, you know, we regulate it to some extent, but I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but we, I don't believe that we're telling every downtown business that they have to uh, fill in basements and, and raise things, right? No, not unless there's substantially damaged building and historic buildings are exempt. So for the most part, that's going to take care of that. So we've, 
you know, we've got about a hundred buildings downtown that were hit pretty hard. Um, and so certainly going through and working with them and trying to come up with plans. Like we said, we were just talking about, you know, we've got vacant office space. Maybe that vacant office space is converted to storage for inventory as opposed to putting inventory in your basement. You put your inventory on the second floor with which what used to be office space. Um, you know, maybe there's some other model that works as well for being able to store and, and do things. We're just gonna have to work with people. But then our other goal is to start to work with property owners. And this isn't going to happen until next year. We're, we're going to try to get what's called a, a brick um, grant, which will do some scoping work for downtown buildings. And it's just a building by building inventory where we can give recommendations to property owners on what are the best things you could do. And again, you know, in some cases, maybe it doesn't, you know, the flood we just got, you're going to still get flooded. But if we get a flood that's, you know, a 50 year flood event, you don't get damaged because we've been able to flood proof up to a certain level that helps to make smaller floods less damaging. And maybe we can find ways to make larger floods less damaging as well. If we can elevate uh, or if we can use floodgates, um, you know, this storm we had advanced knowledge of. So we would have, if people had floodgates, they would have had plenty of time to put up the floodgates. Um, and that's just a matter of designing those, making sure buildings have been completely looked at to make sure there's no way for the water to get in. Um, and they can get in through backflows, um, you know, a toilet in the basement that doesn't have a backflow preventer. As soon as the water ends up in the, the sewer, it just comes out, you know, so you've just got to look at every possible place that water can sneak into a building. You know, second floor of city hall was flooded because the roof drains were tied into the water fountain. And so when it was raining hard and the sewer underground filled up, the water filled up the pipe and water came out the water fountain. Who knew? Um, but that's how the second floor of city hall got flooded. So that's why we don't have offices on the second floor because that still has to all get repaired because of all that water damage. Um, but those are the things that you try to identify in these studies of each of these buildings is how, is, how does water get in and then finding ways of sealing up the buildings as much as we can. So that way, if we know a flood is coming, we can pull a, put a flood door on and keep the water out. Um, and in other cases where there's a new building getting built or some other work, significant work is getting done, maybe people do fill in the basement um, because that is the best, that's the best remedy, fill in the basement and elevate the building and put in a small elevator that lifts people up so you've got ADA access to a building that's a little bit higher. And you'll see that. There was a proposal to do that for the 1216 Main where the um, Beverage Redemption Center used to be that, you know, now um, right next to the drawing board, that, that was, there was a proposal to put a building in there. It would have been three feet above the ground, um, above the sidewalk. It just would have had a little lift for ADA access. There was a proposal for over next to the pavilion building, that vacant lot's owned by Tom Lozon. He had a proposal to put in a, a bank. He's also had a proposal to put in residential units there, same idea. That had to be elevated six feet because of how deep the flood water is over there. So there are ways of doing it. You elevate the buildings, you put in an elevator, um, and um, you can make these buildings, um, new buildings, work. And then for the existing buildings that are historic, we try to flood proof them. And it won't be 100%, but hopefully it works much better than, than we just experienced, which was to have very few buildings flood proofed. Uh, Mike, I have a couple of things. First, um, when we talk about raising buildings up, should we actually, as the Planning Commission, be thinking a little bit about the height limits downtown and whether we should raise those? Because, you know what I mean? Like, give, give, like, it would help the ability to, to um, adapt by going up 
as long as people aren't losing, you know, total space possible. So if we raise the height limits. Oh, uh, you, you, you know what I mean? The, how that yep. like, logic connects. Um, what are the, like, what would be the opposition to increasing the, the height limits by say like a story based on where we are now? For the downtown, it probably won't matter because I believe the downtown is measured at six stories. I don't think it actually has a foot requirement. I would have to double check on that. So whether your first floor starts six feet above the sidewalk, you'd still get six stories. How many, but have how many to, buildings, I would have to check. How many of the buildings are actually at six stories? Any of them? Uh, the Capitol Plaza has a section, I believe, that goes all the way up to six stories. Most of the building is five or four stories, but there is one small section, I think, that goes up to six. Okay. I, so we, we already are allowing most of these most of these buildings could add height, but they're but they're not. Yeah, not not too many not too many buildings are near their max height. Okay. Um Good, that, good not that. that I'm aware of. And certainly if people come up and say that that's an issue, we certainly can come back up and, and make a proposal to increase that height. My other question is, and this is something that, that occurred to me when the flooding happened, but I kind of let it go because no one else ever mentioned this. And it might be like a, a childish idea, but like deepening the North Branch, has that been considered in any serious way? Or is it we just... always we always get proposals and, and ideas like that um, building tunnels under the river to let the water move um, the reality is the amount of water that's moving and the amount of water that's there when you have a hundred year flood event like we did in July um, it's just it becomes negligible of, on the amount of water um, because it's not a static pool of water it's it's moving water and i want to say it's moving i always try to mix up because there's cubic feet per second and gallons per second and i always mix the two up but it's like twenty thousand cubic feet a second or twenty thousand gallons a second and when water's moving that fast it fills up whatever so even if you um i think somebody had proposed maybe we put a tunnel under Elm Street, starting from like uh, Cumming Street all the way down through town. If we built a 50 foot wide, 10 foot high tunnel all the way down there, would that move the water and, and keep us from flooding? And the truth is that would be filled in about 61 seconds with the amount of water that's flowing. And then it basically would just still flood. It just takes yeah, 61 it's... seconds to fill that space. So um, the, the the problem is when it when it hits when it hits the Winooski, there's nowhere to go, so it backs up. Yep. Um. So it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. That's too bad. It would be nice if yep. there was some engineering solutions. Yeah, we've uh, there's there's a lot of people always take looks at those. Um, a lot of the big ones have been done. I mean. This was a, a substantial event, um, you know. Uh, so 1927 was 8.6 inches in 72 hours. This was 6.8 inches, so less, but it was in 36 hours. So half the time and slightly less water. So this was actually, I would argue, probably almost a worse event than 27 because it just didn't get, it just rained so hard so fast um but we had the advantage this time of having all the flood control dams that are upstream from us so we we end up with five six feet of water in the downtown as opposed to 10 feet of water in the downtown um and that's because of the flood control dams so there's not a lot we can do the flood control dams were the biggest savior that we had um i think the successes and I and I you know I'm sorry if I've mentioned this to other people before um the the successes to look at were the 
our modeling that we had for this type of event um, said, you know, build to a hundred year floodplain. So city center was built to a hundred year floodplain and the water got just up to the edge, just lapping on their doorstep. So city center stayed dry because it was built to the flood stage. The transit center was built two feet above flood stage and was perfectly fine. Um, and a number of other places were also built above flood stage or had pieces of their buildings or utilities. You know, For the past five years, we've been requiring people to put heat pumps two feet above base flood elevation. And so there's been a lot of projects that are, that stayed dry. Um, and so there is, there is a certain amount of um, proof out there that if you elevate your building and you elevate your first floor two feet above the flood plane, then you are far less likely to flood. And that's, that's what we've been hanging our hat on in the planning department is saying, you know, uh, we're trying to get money to elevate mostly this, the residential buildings, um, Elm Street, Lower State Street, not the big commercial brick blocks, but those residential buildings. We want people to be safe in their house, whether it's a rental unit or whether it's a regular um, single family home. We want to have those elevated, have no basements, get them elevated above base flood elevation because then people are safe, people are dry. And then we'll work on the commercial blocks afterwards to get them flood proof. Certainly it would be great if we could elevate those, but elevating brick buildings is not, that's not easy. So that would be more challenging, but that's certainly the best solution. Then water's going to flow around your building, the water's going to go down and you're going to open your business back open the next day but not every building will have that opportunity. But that, that would be the goal over the long, long, long term is that we just keep building by building, getting these guys put back either elevated or floodproofed. Thanks, but Mike. As, as Maria says, that it, there, there is, I see it as part of, there is a public component to that. We can't ask property owners to bear all of those costs on their own. So there has to be a place where either this, the local, we could do tax stabilizations at a local level, at the state, can the state put in money, or the federal government, can we get federal money to help pay for those costs? So that way, businesses and commercial landlords have the, you know, the assistance they need. You know, they're, they're gonna have enough money they've gotta put into the project, but if we can defray some portion of those costs, um, to make these these more financially acceptable because ultimately we can't really require people to do it. Um, we have to really show up with some money to say, we're going to cover some of the costs of this and help people help the commercial landlords and the businesses flood proof those buildings because it's good for all of us. This, you know, the, the flooding doesn't just hurt businesses when they lose all their inventory. It hurts. It hurts everybody. I mean, everybody suffered by having this downtown, shut down for months. Um, so it really benefits all of us to have, have the government kind of help, help us be more flood resilient going forward. So By I'll get way, off my soapbox now. That's all right. Um, I've, you know, just, just unofficially, I've heard that we can't expect a, a flood relief bill to pass early in the session, by the way. Um, so no idea if the if the you know the money that Montpelier wants is going to be in there, but it sounds like they're going to do multiple flood relief related expenditures. Um, okay, um, everybody want to move on to the minutes? Get a little bit of. Time for yourself. Um, okay, so Mike has sent the uh, minutes separately, I believe. Uh, we're just gonna review the October 23 minutes. If anybody has any adjustments, let us know. Otherwise, we'll just pass them out as is.
Oh, I noticed at the end of the minutes, it says I made a motion, but I wasn't there. <laughs> I don't know if that matters, but. Yeah, I wasn't there either. So, I mean, at least insofar that the motion is to not, to not do anything, is to leave. I think we can at least leave that in. Like, you know, we're good. Phantom motions. Um, yeah, I don't know how to correct that. Maybe that probably has to do with, I'm assuming that these are, there's like a template and these get adjusted to save time. Uh, and um, my notes didn't have anybody making motions to adjourn. I think we just left. Okay. So we can amend the minutes to uh, reflect that I'll just say meeting adjourned. Yeah, you could say Kirby adjourned using his dictator powers. Um, okay, so we have a motion uh, to approve the minutes with the amendment to the adjournment. Anyone? I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay, motion from Brian um, to approve, uh, including the amendment, correct? With amendment. Okay, do we have a second to Brian's motion? I'll second. Second from Maria. Those are, uh, in favor of approving the uh, minutes with the amendment, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Minutes approved. So next time we see one another, it will be for the hearing. We'll get going promptly on December 11th to make sure that we have time because we want to try to wind down the hearing um and um mikey what you need from us is a reminder you need for us to to vote after the hearing yeah there'll be just it'll be a motion to forward the drafts there'll be two because one's the river hazard one's the zoning to forward the drafts to city council for consideration which means if we want to change anything up, we'll need to be prepared to do that right after the hearing. Um, so if we're going to have any discussion or anything, so, you know, we'll try to, we'll try to be efficient with that, but it mean, you know, I don't, I also don't want to stop anyone from being able to participate uh, like any, in this case, I mean, any planning commissioners who want to make a change or, or want to discuss something that came up at hearing, um, you know, don't don't feel rushed. Uh, you know, what were you going to say, Mike? I was just going to say, we'll we'll see who's who shows up and how many people show up. Um, you know, we've had these zoning amendments where we'll have five people show up, and it's pretty quick to to move it on through. And in other cases, we've had an entire well, usually they're in person, and we'll have an entire room full of people. Give what we got opinions. going for us, what we have going for us is that uh, we have the listening session, and you know um, that may help people feel okay. And we, what we don't have with this is we don't have any like you know major construction projects involved, asking for changes and things because in the past that sometimes a whole community will come out because there's like an imminent thing in their mind like we don't have something like that this time so that yeah that might lower the numbers um so yeah if you if you're if you're talking to the housing committee it doesn't hurt to ask them to kind of show up and give a little bit of support for some of the changes yeah well the support the support we need is going to be um when it goes to city council that's when we're really going to um want to make sure that the that people who are in favor of this are aware of when it goes to city council. So FYI to everybody, 
if you if you're going to call in favors for friends or just or just letting your neighbors know or whatever um then uh it's the most important thing is when it goes to city council it's not going to be this hearing um okay so with that we can adjourn and we can do it with a whole motion and everything if we want uh, do we have a, a motion to adjourn Motion to adjourn, Kirby. I I knew you were going to do it. I could tell. Uh, do we have a second to Gabe's motion to adjourn? Aaron, that was we're gonna we're gonna count it. Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, he may have burped or he may. Have, Second of the emotion, but second, second, second. All right, there we go. <laughs> second, uh, second from Aaron. All right, those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 See everybody in December.